All right, Nashville, we are back. And it's time to continue our career with the Stanley Cup champion Nashville Predators, baby. That's right. For the first time in franchise history, we can officially call ourselves champions of the NHL. But the story's not over, ladies and gentlemen. I promised a dynasty to the Nashville Predator fans, and we've only taken the first step. The first out of three Stanley Cups that we have to win with Ukraine Wayne, baby. So this was an incredible year. We're here with the Twitch Scouts. We've already taken a look at our roster and what the future could hold. And before we even begin to simulate, I want to make a move here because we can extend some players right now and actually get them a little bit cheaper. And considering that we just won the Stanley Cup, it's a perfect time. Everyone's riding high. Everyone wants to remain a predator for long term. It is great. So I want to show you guys... What what me and the Twitch Scouts were talking about, right? The future of this team, because, I mean, Anisimov, he's 22. I said he was a 23 uh, Con Smythe winner. He's a 22-year-old Con Smythe winner. This guy's got, what, 15 years left in? Let's say 10 years. 10 years of prime hockey in him still. So we, we absolutely have the chance at a dynasty, right? Now, we have guys locked up long-term like Anisimov and Darlene and, and uh, Lavalli. It's going to start next year in the 30-31 season. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have these guys locked up for another six seasons, right? But there are a few players whose contract window is actually coming to an end two seasons from now. Guys like Mason McTavish, guys like Philip Tomasino, guys like uh, uh, Kovalev and Paul. Poirier, right? If we look at their contract, McTavish and Tomasino, 30-31, that's next year. One, two, and that, they're a UFA. So we can get one more year out of them before we have to move on from them or make the decision to extend them. Now, considering that we just won the Stanley Cup, it would make sense to try to run it back, right? With the players that we have, we have one free year here that we can make. But I want to show you guys the problem that we're eventually going to run into, right? So we found out that Tomasino works very well with Anisimov and Lavalli on that first line. But Tomasino's 28, so we do have to start looking for a replacement for Tomasino within the next two, three years. If we want to extend him because he's cheap, we can do it. But I'd like to find somebody who is around the same age as Anisimov and Lavalli for the future, right? So we can definitely use Tomasino for next year. But I am eyeing down that playmaking two-way forward that doesn't shoot the puck too much. Now, it could have been Fotinos. But we tried Fotinos on that line. They just don't simulate well together. Fotinos shoots, uh, shoots the puck a lot. In fact, look what he did on the second line all by himself this season, right? He went from 132 shots per year up to 211. The reason it was so low in the other year it was because Lavalli and, uh, and Anisimov were taking the shots. But he does shoot the puck, and I think that's contributing to them not simulating well together. So is Fotinos the guy on the second line? What about Philip, uh, Philip Chara? Peter Chara. Jesus, Philip Chara. Peter Chara. He wants that contract extension right now, and this is what I'm thinking about doing. We can get this guy locked in long-term right now, because if I go long with it, if he continues to grow, what if he wants like 10, 11, 12 million dollars, right? He's a perfect second-line right-winger for us, but we also have Darius Hurd, who's medium elite, who just had his rookie season, might have won rookie of the year, 24 goals in nine minutes of time on ice. That's a perfect second line left wing for the future. So if you got Chara and Hurd, is it Fotinos down the middle as a center? He does have 80 for face-offs, right? So is your second line for the future Fotinos, Chara, and Hurd? And that means that you part ways with, with Tomasino and McTavish, right? They'll... There's a lot of different things that we can do with this team. Um, I'm going to see about the future, but I think for year number nine, for, for year number nine, we can definitely run it back. But I want to get this guy Char assigned right now. Now, he doesn't want an extension. How much money do we have for next year? We have $7.8 million for next year. Now, my blue line, my blue line, I think we're going to have to part ways with Norlander and Korscheck. Uh, Norlander's at $3 million, Korscheck's at $1.25 those two guys are actually going to be replaced by our young guns. I don't know who it is, but either Panayi, Westcott, Metropolit, uh, uh, Placanix, Donovan, we're going to put these guys in the NHL. Two of these AHL defensemen into the NHL for next season. We're just going to force them in there. So I can save some money with uh, Korscheck and Norlander. And then, hang on, I didn't mean to back out. And then we are going to be left with $7 million to get Char assigned. So if I were to sign Char, and if I were to get him with 
the likes of Darlene and Anisimov, it'd be six years. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, for signing this guy as a second line right wing, I'd be willing to go up as high as maybe eight mil. So let's see, six year extension. He wants 8.6. So 8.6, I could probably bring it down to 7.5. That's not horrible. Considering that Mason McTavish as your second line center is at 6250. And it ended up working out. This puts him on our schedule. He gets to 30 years of age. We get the most out of him. I think this is a pretty good contract. Twitch Scouts, what do you think? 7 mil is too much, though? Yeah, but, I mean, he's trending upwards, and he simulates really well. It's because of the defensive and offensive awareness. I mean, look at that offensive awareness, 93. Defensive awareness, 96. I mean, I know we were – look what he did. He's a plus 23. What do he do in the playoffs? 19 points, 11 goals in the play. I mean – I'm just afraid of it going up, right? And if we lock him in, we can trade him if it doesn't work out. I think we got to go for that one. Green, green. The Twitch scouts are giving me the green light right now. There's a red light in there, but most uh, the majority were green light. A four-year extension instead. Keep it a little bit low. No, I'd like to go. I would, I'd like to lock him up. I'd like to lock him up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to spend some money. Peter Chara, he did a great job. And now we're going to have... Um, a little bit too many forwards, but for one year. And then it doesn't hurt us, and we can run it back and try it out, and then we make our big decisions next season, all right? So I'm going to do it. Peter Chara, you had a great playoff run. This is the Twitch Scouts, and I'm giving you a big boy contract to be on our second line right wing and a primary penalty killer and on the second line power play for the next seven e or six years because it's not an extension. It's an actual contract that's going to kick in. Yeah, I think that'll go through. I think that'll go through. 8.24, 1.2 down. It might be tight. Maybe I'll do, yeah, maybe I'll do that just to make sure it goes through, all right? So 6, 7, 7, 5. Yeah, because I don't want him to say no and then he gets angry. So let me do 6 years at 7, 7, 5, oh. All right, offer contract extension. There you go. So he's not really interested, but he's going to take his shot. Um, heard we're not going to have to sign for another two years. So that fits into our contract uh, perfectly, our contract window. And then our third line is nice and uh, cheap. Uh, Askarov is still locked up for, yeah, another four years. So Askarov, we can definitely work around if we need to. We have Markov and then our prospect goaltender, Placanics, 23 years of age. He's already, I mean, no, I'll, I'll wait to sign him. We'll see. All right, so the only choice that we, or the only decision that we made right there was to extend Peter Chara as he's partying with the Stanley Cup. And Peter Chara, it was an easy decision to renew my contract with you. Peter Chara is going to be a member of the Nashville Predators for quite some time. All right, so now when we go the next, uh, the long term, look at all the players that we have locked up for the next six years. Anisimov, Darlene, Drysdale, uh, Lavalli, Chara, Fotino, uh, Yarventi, Ramsey, Draper. So those are the guys that we want to bring into the future. Fotinos, maybe not. I don't know about Fotinos just yet. If he can play the, the second line center position when McTavish goes, maybe we can hold on to him. All right, but uh, that's good. That's a good one. All right, so let's continue to the draft. We'll take a look at the awards. We'll celebrate in our victory, our championship season for year number eight. There it is, your Stanley Cup champions, the Nashville Predators, ladies and gentlemen. Bang. Not a bad deal. Could have been better. Yeah, but you know what, man? I'm afraid of his number continuing to go up. And if it goes down, I can always move him. Like, that's not going to be the end of the world. The draft lottery results. The Vegas Golden Knights go from fourth up to first. The Dallas Stars from uh, sixth to second. Calgary from one back to three. How many times have we seen that, man? Absolutely brutal. All right, so player retirement. Let's see who is leaving the NHL. Patrick Kane, Steven Stamkos, Claude Giroux, Matt Duchesne, Gabriel Landeskog, Tyler Sagan, Sean Couturier, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Mark Stone. You can see the NHL is changing. Ukraine Wayne is going to be the best player in the NHL soon. All these guys have just got to age out, man. That is a list of top NHL players that are just gone. And then Robin Lehner leads the list of goaltenders that are also retiring. All right, so retired players that are not coaches. Don't really care about that. Coach retirement, uh, draft interviews, pro scout on the line, blah, blah, blah. And here we are. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's take a look at the awards, shall we? Let's take a look at these awards. I got to see it. Mm, 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 mm. That looks good. They're Stanley Cup champions for year number eight, the Nashville Predators. Way to go. The Colorado Avalanche uh, won the President's Trophy. 
Uh, we could have won that President's Trophy as well. We beat the friggin' Edmonton Oilers to win the Western Conference Championship. The Boston Bruins, they got back to the... Oh, man. The Boston Bruins have made the Stanley Cup Final three times in the last five years, but only won the Cup once. Brutal, man. That's just That's just the story of the Boston Bruins, isn't it? Good God. The Stanley Cup. Let's go to the individual uh, awards. Art Ross, Nathan McKinnon still going off. Hart Memorial, Nathan McKinnon still going off. James Norris, Kale McCarr still going off. These guys, man. Lady Bing, Johnny Goudreau, Calder Memorial, he won it! Darius Hurd is the Rookie of the Year. We have three out of the last five Rookie of the Year. Actually, isn't it like four out of the last six? Because we had Joaquin Kemmel who won Rookie of the Year. Uh, 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 Maxi Manisimov, Morgan Fotinos, and now Darius Hurd. That's what I mean. Darius Hurd could be your second line left wing in the future, right? We could lock him in. That could be nice. Khan Smythe, Ukraine Wayne, Maxi Manisimov. Way to go. Vesna, William M. Jennings. Oh, we didn't win the Vesna. Thatcher Demko. Ah, uh, ask. I thought Askarov might win it. William M. Jennings goes to Ilya Samsonov. Bill Masterton goes to Pickering. Uh, Jack Adams goes to Cooperman. And Frank J. Selke goes to Bo Horvat. Ted Lindsay, Maurice Richard goes to Austin Matthews. And then we're back to the Art Ross. All right. So there are the awards. Let's take a look at our contract situation one more time. See if we had any player growth, any uh, boost in uh, in uh, potential, anything like that. All right. So Anisimov, 92. Did he jump? Was he 91 and now he's 92? Do you guys remember? Was he 91? He might have jumped to 92. McTavish up to an 89. He went up one. Yes. All right. So Anisimov with his good production season, uh, he went up in a point. So I just need to make sure that he gets point per game, 30, 30 goal season. Drysdale, 88. Lavalley, 88. Tomasino, 88. Chara, 85. Chara went up. Uh, Hurd went up. Poirier, Kovalev. Kovalev did not grow as a medium elite, but that's all right. He locked it down for us. Uh, Yarventi. Yeah, Ramsey, low elites, West Scott, medium elite still in the system. Any elites that grew? Duke Draper still has his medium elites. A long schlong, 70s. I mean, he might make the team. Man, I got so many young players that we have to play. What about goaltenders? Uh, Placanics. Panayi went up to 80. All right, very good. What about Askarov? Oh, Askarov went up to 90. Oh, we got to run it back. We have a team for, we have one year of having an absolute beast of a team. We should be definitely making big trades at this year's trade deadline. We got, we got, we got a huge freaking season here. Okay. 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 Good. 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 All right. So, uh, the draft board, I don't need to be, we're not making any trades where there's nothing that we can bring in. We have a 26th and the 32nd overall pick, then some seconds. Yeah. So we're just going to use these draft picks and see what we can pick up with them. Okay. View draft class. Let's see what we have here. Uh, Godfrey, Manny Godfrey, medium elite sniper. All right. So two Canadians coming into the league here. Quincy Reed, a left wing power forward. That would be nice for us to fill out that line. Any defensemen? Really haven't been any offensive defensemen drafted into this. And if I go to medium elite, is there anyone? Ooh. Chung, a goaltender, medium elite. That's a guarantee. Uh, Stanton, a right-handed a right -handed defensive defenseman going in the going 72nd overall. But he's medium elite. Okay. We can get someone there. Okay, good. Uh, and then also the... Oh, didn't mean to go to a signed scout. Hang on a second here. Let me just go back to coaching staff. Let's see what we got with our coaches. Gail Gordon. He grew to an A. I think he grew to an A. Yes! Gail Gordon now has A plus for offense. That's only going to help our season simulation and give Anisimov more goals per year if we get the right lineups. That is huge. And Eves Darsh also has an A plus. All right, good. So my coaches are definitely uh, doing the right thing. That's really good. And other than that, yeah, I think we're good to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us head into the year eight NHL entry draft, all right? So, I'm not going to be making any moves. We don't have any trades. I'm not looking to unload any players. We just got to see what we can select for the future of the Nashville Predators. And these draft picks really do matter because, like I said, Maxim Anisimov is only 22 years of age, right? So, let's sim to pick 26 and see what we got. Uh, I will call a timeout just uh, just because I want to do some scouting and I want to see who was taken ahead of us. So we go to the beginning. Godfrey, a center sniper, already 84 overall. Look at that. 
Beauty backhand, make it snappy, close quarters. This guy in tight. His shot is incredible. He's fast. Oh, yeah. Manny Godfrey. Watch out for him. Quincy Reed, crease crasher. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, truculence, unstoppable force. This guy is just a physical freak. Uh, Horkoff, all right, a right wing playmaker. Uh, if he doesn't pass the, or if he doesn't shoot the puck, maybe that's the guy we want to play on the left wing, right? Uh, Mewy, Jack Mewy. A sniper with gold 1T from the Seattle Kraken. Some good players coming in here. Uh, Janik, uh, 81 overall, a medium elite, a two-way forward. Very nice. And then you got the top sixes. Ooh, 80 overall, backer, top six, taking 11th overall. That's pretty good, 79. Yeah, some good players here. But no medium elites taken or low elites, so maybe we can snag one. All right, so Twitch Scouts, you've been very good in the past with guys like Peter Chara, right? We saw what he did for us. What can we do here? All right, so let me go through a, a few of them and see if we can get any X-Factors. Any X-Factor, any X-Factor, no X-Factors. Wow, look at this. There you go. Uh, Jonathan Ryder. Uh, nothing much. Let's keep on going. Rankin, Lamb, Ellington, Robinson. Not much, man. Ellison, ooh. All right, so Ellison does have the gold, but I don't trust it because it's only two and there's nothing else. Hmm. There we go. Wayne Banks, he's a gem goaltender. Yeah, not not really, not really much in this year's draft. Landon Biggs, not really much jumping out at me here. Let me just go down to, like, number 60, so the first two rounds, even a little bit of the third round because... Sometimes you can find a player back here. Not much, man. Maybe I should trade my picks for next year or something, you know? Just get some second rounders for next year. 74. There's a few, but not much. Yeah, I can't go any further. All right, so we want to get that medium elite defenseman for sure. Uh, is there any, like, low elite? Let me just sort by potential right here. Ellison, take the other guy. Ellison, NHL ready, go for him. Ellison. Okay, so you guys are saying Ellison. Where was he? Ellison, Ellison. So fans are saying Ellison. I got to listen. Ellington? No, Ellison. Ellison. It's tricky. Ah, but he is NHL ready, the fans are saying. At 17 years of age, six foot three right winger. All right, you know what? If this guy's supposed to go 42nd overall, I'm going to get him right now, all right? Even with our first rounder in the 26th, 26th uh, overall, late in the first round, I'm going to get him. The Twitch fans, I want to give this guy the confidence of knowing that we selected him in the first round, all right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, where is he? Where is he, Ellison? Ellison. All right, so from the Flint Firebirds of the OHL, Dallas Ellison. He is NHL ready. It's tricky gold. Will the Twitch fans or the Twitch scouts come through for us again? Bang! 80 overall, power forward, top six with relentless. All right, that's, that's something. That's not bad at all. You guys already gave me depth for year number one. Nice job, Twitch Scouts. The Twitch Scouts come through with a huge pickup of Dallas Ellison. All right, look at the shot. Yeah, look at that shot. Maybe he's the guy to play alongside of Lavalli and Anisimov, right? All right, great job, chat. Yep, you guys did a great job right there. So let's send him to pick 32. What did we miss? We didn't miss much. Didn't miss much. All right, well, maybe it's the year where we have those kind of draft picks. Let's try to find another guy who says NHL ready. To hell with the X Factors. Let's look for NHL ready. Four years, four years, three years, four years, four years. Nothing on that guy. Uh, four years, four years. Don't know. Three years, four years, a gem. Three years, three years. Maybe it was just that one dude, man. No one else. Jeez, I'm flying. I wish... Oh, I hate how when you don't have that screen, it did, like it, you have to click it again. The best I'm finding right now is three years. That guy was one of a kind, man. NHL ready, deep. Look at this. See what I mean? Then I got to find it again. That's annoying. Five years. <laughs> no, I don't think there's another guy who was NHL ready, man. Take the gem. Take the goalie. Well, I can also take that defenseman because you guys gave me the forward. I could take that defenseman. Yeah, there's nothing else that I'm finding. Okay. So... Who is better off, that defenseman or the goaltender? Uh, Stanton Chung. Chung goes later. Banks, 
40, do I want to take the oh, the gem goaltender? I don't want to take the gem goaltender. Corey Crawford, no, no, no. We already have goalies. Goalies are a dime a dozen in this game. No, I'm going to get that defenseman. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the power forward. I'm going to draft him early and let him know. Bang, we want you, all right? So Stanton, is that his name? Hang on a second. Uh, uh, I got Boom. Willie Stanton drafted in the final pick of the first round by the Nashville Predators. Medium elite, a 51 overall. It's good. We had guys like Chara who took his sweet time as a medium elite overall. So I'm very happy with that one. Sort by gems, Johnny. Yeah, will do. Let me just sim to pick 34. I miss anything. Nope, not much. All right, let's go. 51 overall. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about that. All right, so gems. All right, so we have a few gems here. Uh, there are two goalies. Don't really want the goalies. Wayne Banks and uh, Emil Schultz. Don't really want the goalies. Uh, Cade Allison. He's supposed to go 232nd. Five years. And then Biggs, a sniper. Left wing, Landon Biggs. You got to take it, right? 17 years of age as well. Biggs, easy. All right, the Twitch scouts are telling me to get Landon Biggs. So we got a right-wing power forward. We're going to get a left-wing sniper right now. Um, from the U.S. West, Landon Biggs, welcome to the Nashville Predators. Left-wing sniper, 66 overall, medium top six. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all in the second round. Good job there, Twitch scouts. Uh, my second overall for two fifths. Get the hell out of here, Montreal. Jesus, what are you thinking? What the hell are you thinking? Um, all right, so let's see if we have anyone else medium elite. I go for that goaltender. Let me just see if there's any low elites. Uh, low elites to eleven Gustafson. No, and let me see if there's any. Is that a low elite gem? But it's a goalie, right? Allison, Kate Allison. I'm going to do my own little pick here. I'm going to go for Cade Allison, all right? It's a gem with low elites. I'm going to I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try this. Yeah, I'm going to try this out. Cade Allison from the Winnipeg Ice of the WHL. Welcome to the Nashville Predators. What was it? Let's see. Let's see. Allison. <gasps> The gem was correct. So no X factors, but low elite center sniper, 54 overall. All right, we're going for the rest of the gems. We got to do it. Sim to pick 78. Ooh, we got a guy that was supposed to be real good. That's awful, Johnny. He's 19. Yeah, but what if he becomes like a third liner for you? Like, relax. It's something. I got to go with this goalie now. Let's get the goalie. Let's get the goalie. I got to continue to draft goaltenders. Yep. Medium elites, 49 overall. That's all right. Got to keep on bringing in new goaltenders. Fourth round. Um, What do you guys want to do with the fourth round? Uh, elites. I'm going to try to find an X factor here in the elites. Low elite. Gustafson, 18. What about this guy? What about this guy right here? Oh, the next factor. Hang on a sec. X factor. No contest. 18. Center. Hmm. Go defense. I could try that guy just because the low elites it's three bar. It might be something. Uh, Matt's brother. All right, I'll try this guy. Magnus Gustafson, a defenseman on the left side. <laughs> We're getting a little bit of luck here in this draft, aren't we? We're getting some nice little players here. 18 years of age, low elite. My God. We, like, they, they don't have X-Factors, but we're finding some gems in this one. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going with it. Let's see if I can find, I mean, a medium top four defenseman. I can't go wrong with that, right? Like, that's medium top four. That's straight up medium top four. Or do we want to try a low elite again? Jeff Engel. All right, so do we just take the medium elite defenseman, even though we have a shit ton of defensemen that are making the end, or we take the low elite chance of Jeff Engel, a center as well. That could be nice. 132, Morozo's 129. Top four? Top four, Morozo, top four? I don't know. We already have tons of defensemen. Shoot balance, three years. I'm do I'm swinging for the fences. I'm doing this. This is one where I'm taking it away from the Twitch scouts. We'll, we'll know if I made the right choice or not. All right, so Morozo versus Angle. I'm going Angle. Angle! Let's see. Angle. Oh, low top nine. I failed. I failed the fans. No, boys. No. Morosa. Morosa. Where is he? Let's see. Idiot. They're all making fun of me in the chat right now. No. Karan. 
Let's see Morosa. Where is he going? Acker. I don't even know where, if they're that there yet. Yeah, 120. I mean, 160 is my next pick. It should be there soon. Vlasic. Morosa. There he is. So I missed out on a 19-year-old uh, medium top four. That's all right. That's all right. I don't think we need that. It would have been better, though, so I'm not going to make excuses. Uh, it would have been the better uh, selection, but uh, we were feeling good with our selections. I was trying to go for something even better. All right, so let's do what we always do here. Let's get the biggest freak of nature that we can. Six foot seven, 248, 18 years of age. Troy uh, by Gnarl? By Gnarl? Not 360? Oh my god, we gotta get this guy. Left wing. He could be the left wing, baby. <laughs> I'm getting him. How good was he? <laughs> Hang on a second. But a left wing enforcer, medium bottom six. He's a beast. We're going to get him on the team. Fighting skills 77. Oh, we're getting him on the team, man. He's going to get out there and beat the shit out of some people. By Gnarl. I'll remember you, my man. <laughs> Sim to pick 192. All right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. First liner. Yeah. <laughs> Height, uh, six five. Let's go like uh, the heaviest. Domba, Brendan Domba, eighteen years of age, six five. Seth Estrada. Yeah, we'll go for Seth Estrada right here from the uh, Schwinnigan Cataracts from the QMJHL. Boom, Estrada, baby. Let's see. Enforcer low. I got two enforcers. Let's go. All right, Nashville. We just got a lot tougher. We just got a lot tougher for the AHL. Did I say cataracts? What, what, what's, what's their name? Shit. What, the the Schwinnigan. What did I say? It's not the cataracts. What did I? What is this supposed to be? Shit. Sim to pick 224. Get the other big guy. Get the smallest dude. All right. Will do. All right, so they want the small dude, all right? Five foot eight, 161. <laughs> Charlie Von Arks. He's supposed to go 678 overall. Charlie, they're not going to draft you because of your size. I'll get you, buddy. Von Arks, welcome to Nashville. <laughs> He's a 48 overall playmaker. And there you go, your Nashville Predator draftees of year number eight. I got to say, I like that. You know, you're just building up the prospect pool again, building it up because uh, we're going to need some assets in the next few years to make some moves. All right, so let us get uh, all the boring stuff taken care of. The coaching staff, I will re-sign all these players that need to be re-signed. Oh, good. The coaching staff doesn't need to be re-signed. What about the, uh, the, uh, the NHL scouts? Yeah, so boom, get you done there. I'll just quickly go through this myself. John, the second the last pick was low elite. Really? Oh, man. Just missed out on it then. It's cool how you can find some uh, some nice little gems deep in the draft. And I'd imagine in NHL 24, um, I don't know if it's working or not, but uh, if you can grow X-Factors, finding a gem with no X-Factors, but then giving him ice time and then he develops X-Factors, that does sound really cool. That does sound really cool. The AHL goalie coach. All right, will do. Yeah, we got to get one. Okay, so I'll get that in free agency. All right, so here we are. Let us take a look. We have $2.8 million of cap space. So, Gorgiev, thank you very much for your time, but I got to release you. Markov and Buchanics, I'm going to... What kind of contract? Jeez, I don't have much money. All right, so lots of qualifying. Lots of qualifying. Buchanics, qualify you as well. Garvin, Day, yeah, you're going to be 70 overall. You can definitely play in the AHL, so I'll get you signed. And then we have Chung. So I don't know which is going to be the next medium elite starter to take over for Askarov. But for right now, Askarov at $6 million at 90 overall. That looks really good. Uh, defensively, Norlander, thank you for coming back. We got you the cup, but I cannot afford to pay you any kind. He wants $4 million. I mean, he just won a cup. He can get his money. Course check. Uh, course check. You can get paid as well, buddy. Thank you very much for your time, but I can't afford to keep you. Oh, it sucks to have to break up the NHL team. Uh, Yablonski, we're going to qualify you. Uh, Veracast, we're going to qualify you. Hickey, we're going to qualify you. I want to get all these guys signed if I can. Uh, Burnett, who's he? 
Uh, defensive defenseman, no, I don't see him becoming much. I'm going to release you. You guys, I don't need to sign. Medium elite Svitov, medium elite Stanton, low elite Gustafsson. You can see the blue line looking good. We got multiple layers, baby, multiple layers. Right wingers, uh, Anisimov, Tomasino, Chara, Budenz, Ramsey, Ellison. Oh, my God. So there's the Twitch scouts. Dallas Ellison just giving me another piece for the puzzle in the upcoming year. That's great, boys. That is great. So I'll sign him. Uh, Clark, we're not going to need you back. I'm going to get rid of all these guys now. Visakis, yeah, I want you. You're a drafted grinder. DeBoer, did I draft you? I did draft you. Two-way forward. I mean, you can play in the AHL, so I'll qualify you. Uh, Legacy, are you a grinder or an enforcer? You're a two-way forward. I do not need you. Uh, Hoyles, I don't think I need you. I drafted you, but you didn't become anything, so good nights. Uh, very good. Left wingers. We got Fotino's Herd, Yarventi. Afinaseyev has been good, but I think it's time for him to move on. Yeah, I can't afford. I got to pay all the young guys. So thank you, Afinaseyev. Klimchuk, I will qualify you. Koristin, I will qualify you. Pilash, I will qualify you. Kozhevnikov, he'll be ready to go. I'm going to actually sign you. There you go. Uh, Tikhanov, uh, Sniper, I drafted him, but he hasn't become much. So I'm going to release him. Uh, Prince. Isaac Prince. Is it Isaac Prince? Yeah, there you go. We got Biggs as well in there. Uh, Sergeyev, was he an enforcer? No, he was not, so I might as well release him. Marsh, were you an enforcer? Yes, okay. So Nicholas Marsh is six foot seven, two forty three. We drafted this guy as an enforcer. Top nine low. We definitely want to sign the enforcer, so get on the team, my man. Jesus. Marsh, Benoral. Hey, we got all these enforcers on this team. Milson. Who are you? Enforcer drafted by Nashville. I've been doing this for a few years now. These guys are... <laughs> I'm going to have a whole fucking team full of them. <laughs> Centers. Oh, my God. My HL team is going to be a menace to society. Yakov Trenin. We got a Stanley Cup with you, but I can't hold on. Thank you very much. Bemstrom. No, I can't I can't hold on to you. Niederback. No, can't hold on to you. Uh, Turvden. Yes, I want to hold on to you. So qualify. Angle and... Uh, Allison. All right, so that is everything taken care of. Let us simulate ahead, just get all the rookies signed. And I have $2.8 million, and I want to see if I can sign these guys without it affecting our salary cap. So because they only want $1.2 million, I might be able to give it to them. So who's the most important one? Klimchuk, Jablonski, Veracas, Hickey. Hickey was the top pick for me, but I do want these grinders just in case. So P-Lash, I want to get you signed for one year, $1.2 million. Yep. All right, get Pilash and Turvden signed. All right, one year, 1.2 million. There you go. Now, let's see how much that takes away from our cap. Does it take away 2.4? I don't think it does. So let's see. Uh, Scarabelli, these are the scouts that are now signing with our team. Well, hang on a second. Uh, Turvden is back. Pilash is back. Two point, yeah, now we're down to 2.805. So I don't know how the game is determining this. Maybe they're just putting them on the AHL team, but it's not costing us too much money. So I want to make sure I get these guys back. All right, one year, 1.2. 1 uh, Coriston, yes. One year, 1.2. Uh, Visakis, yes, get you back. One year, 1 1.2. There you go. Yablonski gets you back as well. One year, 1 1.2. Veracast gets you back. Why do they all want a one-way contracts? Because I don't. I think they're tired of playing in the AHL. <laughs> so advance the day. Let's just get them all signed again. Very good. These are all the scouts coming through. Misakis, Hickey, Yablonski, Veracas. Yeah. Yeah, it's not costing me too much money. So I can get all these guys signed. No problem. All right, so I will sign them. Klimchuk and DeBoer. One year, 1.2. DeBoer, same thing. One year. And then goaltenders will get Markov and Placanix signed. One year for Markov. Now, should we be going long-term with a guy like Placanix? I don't know if this guy's going to grow. He's already 23 years of age, but he's only 78 overall. But he's got those X-Factors. But I don't really care about X-Factors for goaltenders, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I don't know about this guy. He might not become anything. So one year at 1.2. Let's not, yeah, let's not. Askarov is our guy, and he's only 28, so we got plenty of time to figure out our next goaltender. Yeah, and goalies are not something that I really like anyways in this game. So let's just get the last bit of players and scouts assigned. So we got our two goalies locked up. We got all of our AHL talent locked up. Yep, and then it's just the rest of the NHL, um, the younger prospects that we're not signing. 
Now, Biggs and Prince, they lead that list, but they're high 60s, not quite ready for the AHL just yet. So we will leave them the way they are. That's going to take care of our scouts, and we can head into free agency, ladies and gentlemen. Now, not a lot of money available to go after any free agents, but I will take a look at the list for you guys just to see if we got any kind of crazy action. Owen Power, unrestricted, damn. The Buffalo Sabres lost Darlene to us, and now they've lost Owen Power to free agency. $15 million. Don't have it. Can't do it. So the power of the NHL is going to be you know, changing after this year. Bockfist, uh, Renz, Johnny Goudreau, lots of good players, man. Lots of good players. Goaltenders. Uh, man, we got a top goalie. We got a top goalie. In fact, that's what we'll do when we get to preseason. We'll take a look at the best players in each position to compare. All right, so I'm not going after any free agents. I don't need them. But I do want to look at the coaching situation because I think you guys said we need an AHL coach, right? So our coaches are looking good. I need an AHL goalie coach. That's what it is. All right, so I'll just go to the easiest coaches to get here. Sort by overall and find a goalie. Hang on, there he is. Malik. Let's go, my man. AHL goalie coach, three years, and I'll pay ya. Yeah. All right, so there is our AHL goalie coach taken care of. Now, now that we've flipped over to this year, I can show you guys the contract situation again. All right, so a guy like McTavish, a guy like Tomasino, two years left, and then they're a UFA. So we got one more year, and then we can look at their contracts for next season in free agency to see what the extension looks like. But that's where we have to make our decision, right? So is there anyone that I can extend right now? I can extend Xavier Boudens, but don't know what he's going to be on this team. He's kind of just on the fourth line right wing, going nowhere, right? And uh, Metropolit, don't know if this guy's going to make the team. Uh, I could sign him long term for really cheap, but again... Ah, let's see. Do we want to sign this guy long term? I don't really like the stats. No, 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 no. Let's not go long term with anyone. I don't know. I don't know. He dropped. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, so we really don't have much to do right here. We just got to get that goalie coach. Uh, I'm happy to join the team. He is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, I don't want to edit. I don't want to make any trades. So we might as well just jump to preseason and uh, make some line changes, do what we need to do, and start the year nine season simulation and begin our march back to the playoffs. So uh, I'll take care of that, and we will jump to preseason. All right, Nashville, here we are, the beginning of year number nine. Me and the Twitch scouts, we've already gone through and edited the lines for NHL and AHL squad. The AHL squad's looking a little bit weak, but that's only because our NHL squad has taken all the good talent. And we are going back with the same lineups that we had last year, right? It's very tempting to put Fotinos on that first line to give us the plus five. But last year, Anisimov with Tomasino and Lavalli, he had such a good season that he won the con smite and he grew to 92 overall. All I want from Anisimov is if he can get to 93 overall. That's all I'm hoping for. 93 from Anisimov, 90 for Lavalli. And then if Fotinos gets up there, that's great. But I just, these two are the ones I'm focusing on, all right? If Fotinos doesn't work out, so be it. But McTavish and Chara. Chara grew to an 87. So the fact that we were able to lock in Chara for six years, I think that's a big one. And look at that defensive awareness, 98. I think this guy is going to help us simulate so well, man. Uh, the third line. Now, we had to break up the third line, which used to be Ramsey, Draper, and Yarventi. But Darius Hurd, who we think is going to be on our second line left wing alongside Chara for the future we got to get this guy some ice time his defensive awareness and offensive awareness and passing and it's all up there as well we know what kind of season he had last year so I'm putting him up on the third line we still have the plus three with Yarventi Ramsey and Duke Draper he's going to be a a lifetime bottom six center for us but look what he did for us in the playoffs last year you still need play uh, players like this uh, Dallas Ellison has cracked the NHL squad so we got a lot of young players here and this is what I mean about the last year before we think about moving on from players like Tomasino, Fotinos, McTavish, uh, Kovalev, Poirier, right? We got a lot of questions. But for this year, we get to run it back. So defensively, Darlene and Drysdale. Westcott, he jumped up to an 82 overall, medium elite. So he's a top four. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him Kovalev's spot because Panay and Westcott don't work well with the pinch cycle uh, under the pinch shoot head coach, which is really unfortunate. But uh, we could always make that switch in the upcoming years. It's going to be tough now that we've already won a Stanley Cup. Gail Gordon's our guy. 
But uh, for right now, West Scott and Poirier seem to work out. And for next year, if I want to put, you know, West Scott and Panay together or split up dries, they, like there's there's options that we could make it work. But again, I'm not focusing as much on uh, chemistry going forward. I'm just not. Power play, we're keeping it exactly the same as last year. Tomasino's in there. Second line power play, we're giving Darius Hurd some ice time this season. We're going to see what he can do. Penalty kill, I really love our penalty kill now. Lavalli and Anisimov. Uh, McTavish and Chara with that defensive awareness and then Hurd and Tomasino all right I'm no longer playing our bottom six on the penalty kill I'm running with our top guns with that defensive overall just doing it the defensive awareness I should say four on four lines look like that three on three lines again just running our top players and we got Yaroslav Askarov who's a 90 overall goaltender for this year he'll probably drop unless he has an outstanding season and our backup Jacob Placanix all right now here's where it gets shitty oh wait wait and the scratch players, we got Klimchuk, we got Veracas, and we have an enforcer, Nicholas Marsh. Now, this is where it gets weak. We we can sign some depth. If we have an injury or two, I'll make some midseason trade. But I think this team should be good enough. And come the trade deadline, that's where we decide to maybe make some moves to get some depth for the playoffs, right? But for right now, I want to play our younger players. The AHL, yikes. It's, uh, it's not looking good, man. I got a lot of grinders out there. I got a lot of enforcers out there. Carter Long, we're hoping that he can grow. Uh, he's a medium elite. He's 21 years of age, so I got I to gotta play him. Um, and defensively, this is where it looks good, right? Metropolitan, uh, Metropolit, uh, Donovan, Placanics. Uh, we're waiting for one of these three or maybe even multiple of the three to crack the NHL lineup next season. But they also have the pinch cycle. And then we have Viktor Markov, the Ukrainian, in the net. All right? So basically, it's time to run it back as the NHL champions, the Stanley Cup champions for year number eight. What kind of season will your, will your Nashville Predators have? I can't even talk right now. I'm going for too long. So let's get a month into the season simulation and make sure that there are no shenanigans. I'd like to get the entire year of simulating done, but if things are a little bit rocky, we might call it around December just so uh, we can uh, ask the YouTube fans what changes they think that we need to make are, right? But if anything, like this team should be even better than last year's regular season team, right? We're not older in any way. Our younger players got better and a 90 overall goaltender. I think goaltending does matter for the regular season, uh, uh, what's it called, simulation. Um, Edgar Westcott's been injured with a sore foot. Estimated return is October 31st. Edgar Westcott, come on, buddy. Your first couple of weeks in the NHL and you're sitting out with a sore foot. He must have taken a shot off the off the skate or something like that. So I'm going to replace him. It's going to be Veracas who goes in. It's not going to be too long of an injury. 6-4 loss to the New York Rangers. <laughs> uh, Veracas, he got injured as well. Oh, man, that defensive position, it's taking its toll on players. What are we doing? Westcott is available to play. Let me just stop the simulation. I want to make sure I do it the right way. There you go. Right, continue. Stop the sim. Stop the sim. Stop the sim. Oh, my God. The game, dude. <laughs> I can't even get it to stop what I want. 5-3-0 to start the year. A little bit uh, a little bit all over the place, but again, it's just too... It's not enough of a sample to give us a true, accurate reading of our team simulation. So we're, we're fine. I mean, we won five and eight games, so let's keep on going. The regulation losses aren't great, but we had two of those regulation losses during an injur, injury to one of our top defensemen. So let's go another month, shall we? Yeah, let's get through November. Let's see what we got. Up against the Edmonton Oilers, that's a shootout win. Shootout win over Vancouver. A 4-1 win over Chicago. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Keep that winning streak going, baby, as we lose three in a row. <laughs> What is it? We're getting like these these minor freaking injuries are piling up. Come on now, boys. And yeah, we're all over the place. Winning and we're getting on winning streaks and we're getting on those losing streaks as well. Look at this. We win like three or four in a row, then we lose two in regulation. 14 and nine to start the year. Lots of regulation losses up until this point of the season. But I still do think that we're gonna simulate well because when we win, we win in streaks. It's just that we lose in streaks, like like two or three. I I think over the course of a long period here. Yeah, we're going to do just fine. We're going to do just fine. Ukraine, Wayne, with 31 points in 23 games played. Here we go. Now, remember, our head coach got better with his offense, so that could be helping out 31, and he's already a plus 13. Yeah, so the team is simulating well. It's just... <sighs> I found out these lines all right. 21 goals in 23 games played for Joel Lavalley. 
what is the season going to be for this guy? 50 and 50. Tomasino doing his thing. Go to the second line. Second line doing their thing. Third line, minus seven. Darius Hurd, four goals. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to change it up. Yeah, so, so be it. Darlene and Drysdale, they're plus 10. Westcott, they're plus five. Panayi, Panayi and Kovalev, minus 10. Yikes, that's not great, but, you know, it is what it is. And goaltenders, <laughs> He got better, for God's sakes, game. All right, it's just too early in the season simulation. Things are all over the place, right? Lavalley's a goal per game. Anisimov is like 10 points above. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to even. It has to even out. There's no way. This is too crazy of a simulation right now. So let's do another month of simming. This just, I can't, I can't put my finger on it, but the team is just, I can't tell what kind of team this is. It feels like a good team. Just the losses, the weird losses. There you go. Like, see what, like, look at this. Four game winning streak, then a seven to two loss. Now, do we come back with another loss? There's a win. There you go. Don't go on those losing streaks. There's a loss, but if answered by a win, two in a row, three. There you go. There you go. Show them what you're made of. This is the kind of team that I was looking for. They lose one, then they win two. Then a shootout loss finally gets in there. 25, 12, and one to start the year. Let's go. We're doing plenty. We're doing just fine. Jesus. Maxima, Nisi, I fuck, I don't want Tomasino to go anywhere. I figured it out, man. Lavalley, what do you got? 31 goals in 38 games played. Oh, right, he's slowing down a little bit, right? He's slowing down a little bit, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let's not touch anything. What's the AHL team looking like? Oof, 13, 12, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. GM Superman doesn't have the salary cap or the prospects to build up the AHL squad. You got to just do your part down there, Eves. Uh, let's go another month. Let's go another month. That's a 7 nothing victory over Vegas. A shootout loss to uh, the LA Kings after not losing in overtime the whole season. We just had two and three games there. Uh, Cody Hickey's been injured with a broken nose. That is the AHL team. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. All right, we're kind of bouncing around right now. A win, loss, win, loss. Look at this pattern. A win next. Cody Hickey is available to play. Uh, I'll just continue for right now. There's a win. Well, loss. There you go. We won two in a row again. Yeah, so we're good. I always like to get to 40 wins before um, 20 regulation losses. I don't know if it's going to happen this year. It does seem like we're, we are losing a little bit more than I would like. You know, like the 17 regulation losses. I don't quite know where they're coming from, but I can't argue as well. Maybe the team is just in a party mode. You know, we're having a great year to hell with defense. Look at Anisimov, man. He's almost an assist per game with 27 goals. And what about Lavalley? 40 goals he got a 40 goals it's the decor i think it might yeah you're right it might be the new uh, the de new defenseman although westcott's a plus 26 poirier is a plus tw 34 drysdale's a plus 25 darlene's a plus 22 plus one minus six they're doing fine it's kovalev I, whatever man he got we're doing fine we're doing it's just the sim is just it's just it's just screwing with us a little bit i wouldn't be surprised if we go on like a 10 game winning streak at some point in this season you know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised. This team is wild, but we're, we're good. Uh, we're fine. I would not be surprised if all of a sudden we just take off. Oh, my God. Now we're going to take off for a losing streak? Come on. Uh, Peter Char has been injured with a sprained ankle. All right, so I will replace him. I just made a return. I forget when it was. Let's just get to the trade deadline. 9-3 to three loss. Oh, my God. All right, slow down the simulation. Slow down the simulation. We don't need to be falling out of contention here. So we have 70 points. The playoffs, we have a 10-point gap over the playoffs. All right, so we're fine. Everything's fine. And E.C. Moff has already surpassed his point totals. He's got 85 points in this. Jesus, let's not, let's, I'm not touching a thing. Klimchuk on the second line. I can put up Darius Hurd there for right now, and I can bring up Duke Draper for right now, and uh, Boutins can take faceoffs. There you go. So let me get Hurd up on the second line right wing just for right now. Uh, why are goals like this being scored all of a sudden? Because I, I found out the right combination for the simulation, and also our head coach grew to A-plus for offense, I think. So the team is just winning more, which is giving us more goals. I, I, dude, don't ask me how it works. I was looking for this in the first few years. Uh, Damon Donovan's been injured with a mild concussion. All right, that's in the AHL. I'll replace him. Uh, Michael McLeod. No, I don't need any waiver player. So a 5-4 win. Damon Donovan is back. I'll replace that. I'll do the best lines of the AHL team in a second here. And Chara is available to play again as well. Good. All right, so let's just simulate up to this day. Probably get Chara back in. Yep, continue. All right, so 38, 22, and 3. We are second in our division. We are behind, of course, the Colorado Avalanche. 
and it is time for the trade deadline. 90 points for Maxime Anisimov. He's going to get to 100 point year, uh, season this year. He's going to get to 100 points. All the questions about Anisimov, man, are being answered very nicely. All right, so boom, boom, boom. Klimchuk, you're going to go in there. Chara, very good. Chara's back in. Defensively, uh, Westcott grew to an 83. That's really good. Panayi's not growing. And then scratch players, Marsh, Veracast, Klimchuk. It was the AHL, right? Yeah, AHL, preferred lines. There you go. So that should get our guys back in. Scratch players, yeah, I don't care about them. All right. <sighs> wow. Ukraine Wayne. Finally, he got that con Smythe, and he believes in himself right now. All right, so when I'm thinking about the playoffs, I mean, I could definitely get some depth. Let's see where we're lacking, what we could improve upon when it comes to our stats, right? So goals four per game. We're scoring more goals four per game than the Colorado Avalanche, and that's what we want come playoff time. We want to be able to explode. That's the change that we made last year, and it worked out great for us. Goals against per game. We're second best in our division, 2.87 behind Colorado. So we're scoring, we're keeping the puck out of the net. Power play percentage, second, 21.9, that's fine. And penalty kill percentage, 86.4. I mean, this is one of them good problems where it's like, what, what, else, what else could we get? What else do we need? This team is pretty much set, you know what I mean? When you lose, you lose big. When you win, you big win big also. Yeah, it's like uh, we're like a veteran team now that just like doesn't show up some nights because we're too skilled. Don't touch anything. I'm just looking like maybe like a, a maybe a top tier forward that could replace Ellison or Budens in the playoffs. Obviously, we could run with uh, we could run with even like Yarventi, Ramsey, and Draper down here, and even pick up two guys to play with Hurd on the third line. Really stack up, right? But then again, Yarventi, Ramsey, and Draper were so good for us in last year's playoffs. Do we want to mess with that? And then defensively, I want to play Westcott. I want to play Panayi. I mean. There's not really much. There's not really much that you could do. But maybe a scratch player. Like trade Nathaniel Klimchuk for an NHLer who's 80-something overall. Veracast for a defenseman who's 80 overall. You know what I mean? Maybe just depth. Maybe just two guys for like a third and a fourth. Just some depth. Veteran call up for the playoffs. Get depth in case of injury. You need some league minimum depth. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. So let's head into the trade deadline, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am going to keep my current trade block. And enter the trade deadline. All right. So hopefully, oh man, they're going to change my lines for me if I make some trades, aren't they? So Isaac Lundstrom, he's the top guy, 89 overall. Uh, Dalibor Dvorsky, 87. Kairou, Carter Hart. So we just got to go down the list here. Hang on a second. Uh, available players. Let's go down the list here and try to find somebody who's like 81, 82 overall. There you go. 82 overall. That's good. Top four defenseman, one year, five million. I can't afford that. Uh, Connor Garland, a sniper. Do I want a sniper? I don't think I want a sniper with that. Uh, the Dallas Stars trade a second and Grushnikov to Minnesota in exchange for Edstrom. Jarv I don't even know what these are now. <laughs> That's a problem, EA. You should show us the actual player and everything that goes along with it. The overall number, the potential. I can't. I don't know who these players are at this point. Travis Dermott. I need one year. Uh, one year, four million. It's got to be lower than. It's got to be like one year, three million. There you go. Alex Tuck, power forward. One one year, three point three mil. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a nice little defensive player for us. Uh, yep, defensive awareness eighty seven. He can body check. Let's see. Nice power forward. Simulates well. Plus two. Yeah. How much is this gonna cost me? So Alex Tuck, and you get you to retain half the money. Johnny, there ain't no point. These guys are the same overall. Right, but um, what's it called? If we get an injury in the playoffs, I'd rather put in a guy like Alex Tuck than put in a guy like Klimchuk, right? The Florida Panthers trade a third and a third to the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for a third. Uh, Rodrigue and a set. I don't even know what these trades are. <laughs> so Klimchuk for Tuck. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. It's going to change up my lines, though. And I'd give them a... I'd give him a third rounder. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that one? Straight up. We're just, just beefing up our squad for the playoffs. Klimchuk is not much, and we're not going to need him for the future. Give them two firsts for him. <laughs> yes, straight up for a second and a third. Green, green. All right, so they're giving me the green light over here. 
Klimchuk, thank you very much. And a third for Alex Tuck at half retained. Will it go through? Trade accepted. All right. What's the purpose of this trade? Klimchuk is 76 overall. Alex Tuck is 81 overall. If I need to go to one of them in the playoffs, uh, 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 what's his name? Alex Tuck will be better. All right. That's depth. That is just strictly depth. And then we'll also get a defenseman depth because my one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm using Veracas. Yeah. So I'll put Veracas out there. Let's try to find a defenseman who's like 81, 82 overall. Depth defenseman. Uh, yeah. Available. All right. So let's go down there again to like 81, 82 overall. Try to find a defenseman with a cheap contract. Well, five million. There you go. Center though. 4 mil, 1.8 mil, left wing, left wing, center, center, goalie, goalie, left wing, defense. God, this system sucks, man. Every time a trade comes in, it resets me back to the beginning. God damn it, EA. You're so fucking bad, man. <laughs> center, left wing, goalie, 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 defense. Uh, center, left wing, defense. There you go. Nyazev, 3.1 mil. I need something a little bit cheaper. Uh, Lindholm. Hampus Lindholm. There you go, veteran. Hampus Lindholm. Let's do that. Let's try to get him at half retained. Jake Bean? No, I don't want to get offense. Uh, I don't want to get offensive defenseman. So Lindholm, straight up for Veracas. Where are you, Veracas? Uh, there he is. Very good. And the same thing as we did before, I will give you a third rounder. For Lindholm the same way I did last year. Green light, ladies and gentlemen. Green light. Veracast for Lindholm. I'm going to take on that contract. And, uh, and yeah, we'll have that depth just in case. Green? Green? All right. So, they're giving me the green light. Let's see. Trade alert, though. The LA Kings trade Ganey. Um, and a fifth to the New York Islanders in exchange for <laughs> Pierre-Luc Dubois. Again, I don't even know these. So, Veracas, thank you very much, my man. But I need to have... This is a big chance to win a second Stanley Cup. I need to make sure that we have that depth just in case. Proposed trade. Trade accepted. All right. So, there you go. So, not much at this year's trade deadline. But we improved two of our depth pieces. Okay? And we got plenty of centers on the team. We got Ramsey, who can play center. Duke Draper, who can play center. Fotinos, who's got good face off. So, if I lose a center, Tuck can still play the wing. And I can move the face... I can move the uh, centerman around a little bit. All right, good. So let's get back. That's enough. Exit the trade deadline. At this point, you really can't even tell what's going on in the trade deadline, right? Maybe years one and two, you could do it because you're familiar with the contracts and the teams and all that. Sean Monahan's being dropped. Uh, view player info. How good is he? I mean, seven, no, 79. I got better players than that. Decline. I don't need him for the playoffs. Now, hang on a second. Am I going to have to do this? Am I going to have to do this? Am I going to have to do this? <gasps> it didn't do it. It's because I didn't mess with it. I just messed with players who were scratched. Yes. Yes. I don't have to do any line changes. Yes. So now we have Lindholm and Tuck just in case. All right. So real good. So Lavalley, my God. Lavalley, he is going to break through for 50 goals this year, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe even 60. All right, we're on the live count for Lavalley and 60 goals. And Anisimov, will he get to 100 points? I mean, he should do it. He should do it. You guys are having a great season, an absolute stellar season. All right, so let's just continue the simulation and uh, let's see what our players end the season with. We'll go up here for the final week of the, uh, the regular season. And like I said, I want to have a good freaking end to this. Uh, replace Elliott Metropolitan down there in the AHL. I want to have a good like winning streak here. It's kind of been a weird season for a team that has stats all in our favor. You know, we do have a lot of uh, we do have a lot of regulation losses. Uh, Cameron Ramsey's been injured with a hip pointer, so there you go. Alex Tuck, April tenth, he'll be back for the playoffs. Don't worry. There's three in a row. Come on now, boys, finish the season strong as we lose two in a row. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I can't get ahead of the uh, Colorado Avalanche here. And the Wild are catching us, so we're looking like we're going to have another matchup with the Wild. Maybe we can catch the Avalanche, but they have two games in hand. A big game right there at the end of the season. All right, so just get back into the playoffs. It's official. He's here. He's arrived. Ukraine Wayne with 101 points in 76 games played. Everyone's saying that this guy's a bust. He has broken through. He is officially the man. And Joel Lavalley, he fuck. 60 goals. Will he get to 60? Will Joel Lavalley get to 60? Come on, Joel. You can do it. All right. So uh, let's go back to the calendar here. Damn, man. 
Real time sim the Colorado game. That's a great idea. Let's do that. Yeah, because that will that will be a a preview of basically um, the Stanley Cup playoffs when we have to go up against them again. You know we're going to have to go up against them again. Cameron Ramsey should be back. Let me just continue the sim. Let me get him back in there right now. 102 points. Yes. Yes. Finally. Finally. Uh, Ramsey, Ramsey, Ramsey for Tuck. I was looking at Tuck. I'm like, yeah, he's good enough to play right there. <laughs> but no. I was looking for like a lower overall player. There you go. Ramsey back in the lineup. And we have Marsh, Tuck, and Lindholm as our depth pieces. Very good. And, in fact, hang on a second. I think Elliot Metropolit came back from the AHL. So let me just, uh, yeah, head coach prefer lines down there. And now we'll get to the simulation. All right, so a game up against the Calgary Flames. A 3-2 loss. Yeah, a lot of regulation losses on the year. The, the way we were simming early, I could have thought for sure we'd keep the losses below 25 on the year. We're up to 29. My God. So here we go. A preview of the playoffs between the Nashville Predators and the Colorado Avalanche, ladies and gentlemen. What are we going to see here? We had seven games of these of this kind of simulation last season, and we just managed to scrape by. Lapierre is going to score on Askarov. At least Askarov is a 90 overall this season. If goalie stats matter at all, it should be a little bit better. So what, what's going to happen? First period comes to an end, and Nashville cannot score. We're also on the Joel Lavalley 60 goal run. Come on, Joel. We need some goals from you here. I shouldn't have done this. I screwed with the simulation. I should have just done the real-time sim. We're screwing with history. Power play for the Colorado Avalanche goes nowhere. Damn, their goaltender is doing great, though. Look at the shot totals for us. 28 shots to 12. More than double the amount of shots they have. We're killing them. Their goaltender is just standing tall. We're killing them. 32 shots to 14. And we're not taking penalties either. We are destroying them. What is going on here? New hook is going to score for the Colorado Avalanche. Well, can't blame our goaltender. I mean, it's just their goaltender stealing the game. Askarov only allowed two. It's not great, you know, but it's not horrible either. He didn't get the shutout, but look at this. Have the Colorado Avalanche built their team for defense? Whoa. Whoa. That is a statement game right there by the Avs. All right. All right. You know what? It's good, though. Get that shit out of the way early, you know? Get that shit out of the way. Then when we get to the season sim or the playoff sim, it'll be different. Get that shit out of the way early, man. I'm fine with it. Man, we, we the, the best like offensive team in the NHL just got shut out. All right, so that's going to give them that division. And the last game of the season, let's see. Yeah, we're not going to catch the Avalanche, but the Wild are behind us. They can't pass us, so it's official. The Nashville Predators finish a second in the Central Division and win the season or uh, win the last game of the regular season up against the Seattle Kraken. 48 30 and 4. Yeah, a little bit more regulation losses than I thought. I thought we might be on for a President's Trophy this year, but I am not going to complain with a season like that for you. Ukraine Wayne all right that's absolutely fantastic so let me quickly just save this uh create new file check penalty kill and power play yeah I'll do all that don't worry we're gonna we're gonna take a look at everything we'll sum it up create new file there you go very good all right so let's get in here and take a look at some of these individual team stats and player stats and see what happened all right so the Colorado Avalanche with 106 points uh, the entire league, the Boston Bruins with 115. So we are eighth best in the NHL. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. It feels like we should be a lot better. We're the we're the highest, we're the best goal scoring team in the NHL. So that's the stat that I care about. Once we get into the playoffs, you know what I mean? That's the stat that I care about. So hell yeah. Goals against per game, 2.82. We are we are like top 10. Yeah, we're like top 10 for goals against as well. So yeah, these stats are all over the place. Power play percentage, where do we sit? Uh, we are third best in the NHL for our power play and penalty kill percentage. We are second. Look, this does, doesn't it seem like this is like a President's Trophy team? Our home record was 20, 19, and 2. Wow. Weird season, man. Weird season. The Voodoo was trying to screw us over, but I just have way too much of an overpowered team. Now, that's a weird one. I have no, I don't know what to make of that. So forwards, there you go. Maxi Manisimov with 104. Ah, uh, Joel Lavalle, he missed out on 60. Don't worry about it, Joel. It's best season, though. Thomasino, that's exactly what I need. Look at Fotinos. I'm telling you, Fotinos gets shots. 
Chara and Fotinos and McTavish all working together on that second line. Darius Hurd, 24 goals last year, down to 10. What the hell? Alex Tuck, Ramsey, Arventi, Draper, Boutens, and Ellison, 16 points on the fourth line. Uh, defensively, Darlene, Poirier, Drysdale, those are my three guys who can get the, those assists for me. Westcott, there you go, Westcott. Pretty good season for him. And goaltenders, a 9 5 uh, so... Fucking goalie stats, man. He's the best he's ever been. And he had, <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> Just a wild season. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. So let's take a look at around the entire league. Where did Anisimov fit in here? Austin Matthews beat him by two points. The Art Ross is coming my way. Matthews is 33. All these assholes, like Pasternak, 34. 34. Marner, 33. Dreisaitl, 35. Brad Marchand, 42. Still getting 98-point seasons. All right. Oh, he's on Edmonton. Great. So it's Marchand, Dreisaitl, and McDavid on the first line. Awesome. Debrinkit. These guys are all in their freaking mid to late 30s. Anisimov is 23. It's going to be my time soon. It's going to be my time soon. Goals? The Art Ross. No, sorry. The Maurice Richard goes to Joel LaValle. Way to go, Joel. Way to go. Good job, my man. And defenseman. Let's see. Points. Owen Power signs with the San Jose Sharks as a free agent. Goes off. Man, he might be the best defenseman in the NHL right now. 28-92 overall. Yeah, yeah. Owen Power is better than Darlene, man. D man. Buffalo lost out big time. Uh, oh, and uh, no, I forgot to look at the rookies. Last but not least. Hang on a second. Last but not least. Let me take a look at all of these rookies in the NHL. Rookie skaters. It's Bryant Morrow. Where are we going to get that guy, Bryant Morrow? I remember that draft pick. I was like, shit, I missed out on that guy. Damn, we could have had another guy who was a really good simulator. Squeen, Horkoff, Nyquist, Braithwaite, Godfrey. He wasn't he the first overall pick? Yeah. Godfrey, 28 goals and 42 points. Not really a playmaker, but he can shoot the puck. All right, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, your year nine regular season. The, the, the team is good. The team is definitely good. Just the goaltending, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys saw something that I didn't. I don't know why we didn't have a better simulation, but I don't care because Anisimov and Lavalli both had even better seasons, which means I'm hoping that their overall continues to go up. That's all I care about, right? That's the team. So will we be able to repeat? We're going to be taking it into the year nine playoffs during the next live stream. And the team we're going up against, it's a rematch from last year. We swept them out, the Minnesota Wild. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one.